All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo. Um, we are going to have a short intro because we Very ended up short. recording so much longer than we planned to. But I think we got we covered a lot of good stuff, honestly, uh, on our initial AFC East crossover episode. With uh, we're talking about the Jets and the Bills and and kind of all of all of how that meshes this year. Um, so we'll get into that later, but. We have a football game this week. Like the Bills are playing <laughs> as you're listening to this, hopefully, tonight. Like Friday night. It's Bills football. Yes. How, how I'm I'm hyped outside of the fact that I will say I, I realized that I'm driving during part of the game for a family vacation. So I'm gonna have to be streaming That's, the game on my phone. Oh my god. But I'll be watching. Oh my it. god. How excited are you for just to see the Bills? on your TV again? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think the excitement is going to hit me until like the kickoff, right? Fair. Because I, I, I don't know. There's so much going on in my life right now that I, I, I'm just not – like I, I just can't get into like, oh, my God, the Bills are about to play. Um, I did look at my wife the other day because I, I put on the Hall of Fame game, mm-hmm. and she walked She walked through the room. She said, what well, football, – football's back on? <laughs> And I said, I said, how does it how does it feel knowing that you're about to lose your husband for a few months? And she was like, she said, she said, I kind of don't like it. And she turned around and walked away. So um, I'm I am excited, but I'm not going to get like giddy excited until the kickoff. And then I'll probably be very excited for like the first series. And then after that, I'm gonna be like, it's the preseason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, no, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. And that just means we only have four more weeks to go mm-hmm. until the actual regular season. Then the regular season, you, you want to talk about oh, excitement. Things get rolling. Yeah, you, yes. you, you, get, you get up. So, yeah. Yeah, so I, with, this, with this drive that I have, um, I, I'm considering making my – or not sorry, making would be incorrect. It would be asking my fiancé to just – be the one who's driving during the second half of the drive so I can just sit in the passenger seat and stare at my phone the entire time and just watch the Bills play football. I just watch like, it. I, I might have to, I might have to just despite her not really liking being the one who drives, not really having the best sense of direction, even if following a GPS. It's a whole thing. Marriage I, I might is still, all about I might still have, yeah, and she she might compromise to be the one driving during the second half, so yep. I can watch the the first half of the game. We'll we'll see how that goes. I just just want to throw that out there. So if I get in trouble, if I'm texting you Friday night, being like, "Hey, this didn't go well," not happy with me. It's because I I, I had her drive on a long long car ride. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, but. We have to. We got to talk about the game a little bit. Don't really care about who wins and who loses. None of that matters in preseason. I have, I have unless you're gambling. I know you're you're gambling on preseason. I'm, I'm not. Gonna, I'm pre-season. not placing bets until regular season, personally. But coward. I look. I'm. I'm gonna be smart, okay? And I'm gonna make <laughs> money gambling when I gamble. So we we do have to talk about just who we're looking forward to watching. And I think before we say anything, like who we're talking about. Let's just let's just do the wide receivers now. Let's just get that out of the way because everybody's going to be talking about that. I, I know you've been going at this on Twitter. I Kumaro, have. Stevenson, Isaiah Hodgins. I think we're excited to see just all of them, all three of them, who wins that battle because they're all kind of fighting each other for that wide receiver six spot. So I think we can just agree that they would make the list because we just want to know who's getting that six wide receiver spot. And you personally probably just want to see – it not be Kumaro so you can be right. Uh, it's it's not necessarily that. Um, it's just every year, Bill's Mafia, and and yes, I, I've had people come at me and say, you're being too negative. And I can see where some people would say, like, you're being negative and you're not, you're not just letting fans be fans. And I understand that. It just... It, it, if you can't give me a reason as to why he should make this roster outside of Aaron Rodgers likes him and he has a cool nickname, which by the way, I don't even think is kind of cool. It's just touchdown <laughs> Jesus. Like it's not, it's not even that cool of a nickname. Um, but if those are your two reasons of why he should make the roster, I disagree with you. 
And yes, we've heard, you know, rumors that he's doing very well on camp. Um, we've had the media pumping him up in training camp. We've had this, we've had that. And I just want to see how he performs in a game time setting. I will say this though, if he comes out and he lays an egg with Trubisky and uh, Webb and Fromm throwing him the ball, I don't want to hear the excuse that it wasn't Josh Allen throwing him the ball. Because at the end of the day, it's like, if you want to make the roster, it shouldn't matter who's throwing the ball. You should still be running your routes crisply. You should still mm-hmm. be trying to get away from these defensive backs. There shouldn't be that excuse of, oh, well, Josh Allen wasn't throwing in the ball. He wasn't running with once, and that's why he didn't play well. I want to see him succeed, but I wanted to see him succeed based on talent and not based off, oh, a different quarterback on a different team said he liked him. He said he was the second best receiver on, on the Packers. Like That's not hard to do. Right, I want him to succeed because of his talent, not because we're in love with him. And I've been saying that over and over and over and over mm-hmm. again. Are you in love with the player or are you in love with the talent? Right, And it's two different things. And I guess as fans, it is okay to find that one guy that you're just like, well, you know what? He seems like a cool guy. I'm going to root for him and I want him to succeed. Uh, but like, I don't want that to be the excuse that he makes the team or that's why fans want him to make the team. Like, we're in a Super Bowl window. I don't want a guy to make the team because he has a cool name. Like, I want the guy to make the team because he's going to help the team succeed. And it's actually kind of cool that we're arguing about the six wide receiver because at the end of the day, like, that doesn't really matter, right? Um, but I am looking at him. I want to see how he does on special teams because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if he makes it, because it's, and that's that's been a one big reason for the for the guys that have interacted me and, and the girls that have if interacted he, if, me. If he makes it, he makes it because of his special, special teams. teams more yes. so than anything else. Because that, like, as a wide receiver six, you have to be able to help the team yes. in more than just maybe he gets on the field as a wide receiver. He has the leg up in that regard because he will play in multiple at, multiple facets of the special teams. Whereas Stevenson, I think, is more just if he wins the return return. job, then he can. And I have no idea how Hodgins plays in, uh, like, outside of being a wide receiver. But, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see how those three kind of fill out at at this point. Like, who who gets the leg up after the first game, then after the second game, then after the third game? How are we looking after that? So it's going to be interesting. We're going to have to make sure we're keying in, really watching those guys. And don't just look for like one splash play. One splash play doesn't win a guy it does a job. Not matter, yeah. But it can definitely it can help. It's not gonna win the guy mm-hmm. a job though. You gotta be doing a lot of things right. So let's let's leave that in the in the past at this point. Uh we don't have to talk about yeah. the wide receivers anymore, or else eh. who knows? You might get a little uh, fired up, you might get a little I'll, angry. I'll fight somebody later about Kumar. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right. So give me, give me do you want me to go first or you want to go first for the three no, guys we're I- looking to watch? I can go first, and I'm okay. gonna do like I'm gonna do rapid fire uh, yeah. on them. Um, Spencer Brown, I've talked about him a lot. I'm very curious to see what he does. Um, Harrison Phillips, I want to see how he comes in. Um, does the, how long does he play? Right, I want to see because I, I kind of think he's competing with Justin Zimmer, right? And if Harrison Phillips makes the team, then you got to think they're trading Zimmer, right? Mm-hmm. So I want to see Phillips come out there, and I actually do want to see splash plays from uh, from Phillips because he'll be playing against the twos. Right, and he's considered a starter. So I'd like to see splash plays from Phillips. So he's a big one for me. And then Cam Lewis is my last one. Uh, a lot of people have been overlooking him when it comes to our depth chart and him actually making the fifty-three. Um, but I want to know why. Like I want to see him stand out this preseason. I want to start talking about him like we would talk about Dane Jackson. You know, before the draft and all the other stuff. Like I want to see what Cam Lewis is about and if he's. If he's not the guy, then he's not the guy. Let's go ahead and cut him. But he is be he is making some splashy plays in training camp. He did have a pick um, off of um, I don't even know who the quarterback was, but uh, Isaiah McKenzie was the wide receiver, so he he made a pick there, made a really good play on the ball. So I'm very curious to see what he can do um, against another team. Yeah, I mean I, I like those picks. It's every single player. I mean Spencer Brown for you, that's been your guy from day one. You have been yep. all in on him. So just seeing how that works out with actual game action, I, I, that makes sense. Every every single one of those players makes sense because they are guys who have to either prove themselves as a rookie or prove themselves to get a position on the roster. So I like those. My three, I will say my, my – I'm not going to do rapid fire for mine. 
My first one, Antonio Williams. I am just going to start off. I am biased. I, I am. I am biased when it comes to Antonio Williams because he is a friend of the show. He has interacted with us before. He friends, has made a couple of promises to us about what might yep. happen if he scores a touchdown, if the Bills do really well and win a Super Bowl this year. And like he, he we're friends. We're really good friends with Antonio Williams. Best friends, some might say. BFFs. Um, yeah. We, yeah, we we might be Antonio's best friends at this point. Um, but Despite me being biased about that, he still has to work his way onto this roster. Like, there's no doubt yes. about that. He's not anywhere close to a guy who's just like, you're on the team. He has to prove it. Despite having a really good half and despite fans loving him and him being like a cool, fun guy, he's still got to prove it. And he's going to have the opportunity because Zach Moss might not be going. Like, we don't know what's going on with his uh, hamstring injury at this point. He might play, he might not. Despite that, Antonio Williams has an opportunity. We saw him do really well in game action last year. Is he going to be able to capitalize on that and capitalize on, from all reports, a really good camp so far? So I'm excited about that. I want to see him do well. I am biased, but I know he has to like actually perform in the game to give himself a shot because he's not going to, like, he has to beat out another player to make the roster. It's not going to just be a given by any means whatsoever. So, Antonio Williams, the first one, Greg Rousseau. I want to see what he does in game action too, just because the the reports for him is that he's kind of hit the ground running. He's been running with the ones for the bills, which I think was a little bit unexpected, honestly, with him really coming in as more of a raw talent, like really high potential, but is he going to be able to hit the ground running and really be at an NFL level early? It sounds like he's been where the bills want him to be so far in camp. But can he put it together against other NFL players when the pads are on and you're hitting full force? Because like you're not going 100% for every single hit in camp. It's a little bit different. But when the, when the clock's running, how is Rousseau going to impact the game? Doesn't have to get a sack. Doesn't have to force a fumble. But is he going to be in the right places? That's really what I care about the most. Can he get in the right places? Can he maybe get a pressure or two just – Show that you're on the field. I want to be able to notice Greg Rousseau when I'm watching the game. I don't want it to be like, oh, he was out there. I I want to know, like, we see his number flash because he made something happen, whatever it may be. So that's, that's my second one. My third one is a relatively unknown guy, Quentin Morris, tight end. And I'm going with him because I wanted to go with somebody who was a pass catcher. That will always, I've said this before on the show, wide receiver has always been my favorite position in football. I, I, that's what I played when I played for a single year in high school outside of my injury issues. Um, but I've always loved watching wide receivers play. He's not a wide receiver. He's a tight end, but he's kind of that hybrid from what all reports. And he'd be fighting for that third or fourth tight end spot. And by all reports, he is an undrafted guy who's doing really well in camp, just having a great camp, starting to make a name for himself. And with an undrafted guy, I I really care about don't just do it in camp. Don't be one of those guys who's just a practice player, because if you are cool, you you can make a career for yourself being on the practice squad for a couple of years. But I want to see if he might have the chops to actually make an active roster and who knows, maybe make a play or two. Just get out there don't drop the ball. Please just don't drop the ball. Like that's really what I want to see. Just show us that your hands are NFL hands and not just practice hands. Yeah. Be reliable. And he yeah. doesn't like, you don't have to be all world. You, you don't have to be incredible day one. Just show that the reports of what you're doing in practice aren't just what you should be doing in practice. It's what you're going to do in the game too. Like that's what we want to see from everybody. But I think those are my three guys that I'm most excited to watch. I'm down with it. Um, yeah. Morris was uh, um, was one that like kind of jumped out at me that you said uh, because you, you got to think the two tight end spots are kind of locked up one and two, and the third one do they go with a with a hybrid player like him or do they go more traditional and with a blocking tight end? See, the, so like the question with that, that is, is going to be big. They've gone with four recently. 
Mm-hmm. So are they going to go with three? Are they going to go with four? Like, do, does does Reggie Gilliam get that tight end spot? Yeah. Even though he's a fullback, and then do the, yeah. like, how does that all play out? They're, Reggie Gilliam has probably the leg up in that regard because he does have that fullback tag to him, even though he's really yeah. more of a tight end. But can a guy like Quentin Morris? <laughs> you, you good? <laughs> It's like, guys, can a guy guys, like Quinn Morris exhausted. make something happen so that he can force his spot on the roster just like Reggie Gilliam did last year? It would be cool to see two undrafted guys in a row make the team. So that's that's who I'm looking at. I think we've had enough. I know we're, what, like 10 minutes into the 15 minutes into the show right now, but I promise you yeah. we're not. We've been recording for a while because you are Almost about to listen hours. to – the AFC's crossover episode with the Jets. Um, so let's just transition right over into that. Go Bills. Hopefully you're enjoying watching the game Friday night. Just football's back. Football is back. All right, let's welcome on our special guest of the week. Uh, This is the AFC's crossover podcast. This is the first version of it. I guess technically it's the second time through because we did this last year uh, before Casey joined the show. But I am bringing on now my good friend, Zach Kautz. He is also a producer over at ESPN. On the digital side, he works with ESPN Plus and maybe a, a couple of the other um, platforms, but I know ESPN Plus. That's one of the things he mentioned. So Zach, he is on because he is a Jets fan. So everybody, if you're listening in your car, quick, give give Zach a quick boo. <laughs> Let's go. The the Jets raid is here. Thank you uh, so much, boys, for having me on. I appreciate it. Been following along for a long time. You guys have been killing it. Keep up the great work, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk some football with you guys. Yeah, you know what? We do our best. Um, I do think the show has gotten a lot better since Casey joined. I know he hasn't said <laughs> oh, anything yet, oh, but the I was show going has definitely to. gotten better since Casey joined. It, it turned to. into something different. No, no, don't worry. I'll say it for you because I know <laughs> you're you're always going to make sure you talk yourself up like that if you get the chance. Is it talking yourself up or is it telling the truth? I, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, the day. it mean, depends on the day. Hey, someone's okay. got to keep uh, Kyle Knapps right here a little in check, you know? So, Casey, if you uh, do that, you're, you're doing fine, you know? Definitely <laughs> add into the to. show. Someone's <laughs> got to. Um, yeah, I, I'm excited. Dude, let's, let's avoid the Tiger talk today um, and just Why? Talk, talk Bill's Jets. Why? Is that we good with that, Casey? Why? Why would we avoid it? In fact, since you brought it up, let's just get it out of the way in the beginning of the show and just kind of a, a nice icebreaker here. Okay. Um, so, right, Zach. Sure. Mm-hmm. It, you ob- you obviously listen to our show. It, it, you are a very, 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 very good listener, right? You always text us, and you're always like, "Hey, I listen to your show." Blah blah blah. <laughs> it'd be it'll be midnight, right? The show just posts, and you're like, "Love the show, guys." Um, so you know this question was coming. You knew it was coming. You've been looking forward to it. Do you believe oh, I can take a tiger one v one in a gladiator style fight if I had a semi above average sword <laughs> you you've first of all, you've adjusted this it used to just be a knife by the way and then you realized that was just completely crazy sorry was just it had a knife to, yeah it started out as a knife and you've wow. turned it into a sword okay so for for those on youtube i'm gonna i'm gonna demonstrate in my mind what i'm thinking of i'm thinking of a knife probably about that big so should we say dagger a dag- yeah, dagger yeah dagger well yeah. But here's the thing about a dagger, and I don't want to get too far off topic, but <laughs> dagger dagger seems too much of like medieval, like, oh my god, he got murdered with a dagger. You know what I'm saying? So I don't like saying dagger. But let's 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 say dagger. I, I have a dagger. Can I take a tiger on 1v1 in a gladiator style fight with a dagger? Oh man. Um not having any prior knowledge of your combat skills. Um I'm gonna have to lean with a no here. And that's, that's only because that's, these that's, these tigers, yeah. man, you do not want to mess with. Again, though, there's got to be there's a lot of external factors. How hungry is this cat? You know what I mean? Be hungry, that, starving. That, it's, yeah, it's I'm, gladiator. I'm in charge I of that. Know, I'm going to make sure the tiger is very hungry. <laughs> yeah, I, then I don't know if you have a chance. I mean, maybe maybe if you you you, you know you slip the dagger in there first okay. charge, you're in. So but here's the after thing. That, that, you, you got no chance, man. I don't know. See, see here's but again, the thing. I don't know how you, I don't know if you're a fighter. I don't. You could be. You you brought it up. You brought it up. You said. If you stab him in their first charge, so let me let me just paint the picture for you, right? The tiger comes out, 
right? We're doing yep. the whole walking in a circle around each other type deal, right? Are you not right? entertained, right? You're, Are you yeah. not entertained? Yeah, The yeah. tiger goes to pounce, right? What do I do? I sidestep him, bam, right there in the neck, <laughs> done for, right? That's how it's going to go. Now, I'm not saying I'm not going to come out of there unscratched because obviously the tiger, it's going to it's gonna get me, right? And that's okay. I'm just saying, could I take on a tiger 1v1? I'm not saying, could I just absolutely demolish a tiger, right? I'm not crazy, Right. I just think that, yes, I would win. Right. If it's me or a tiger, I'm going to win. Not crazy. Hmm. I, I'll give you maybe like one every five times you're in there with the tiger. You might get them. But I, I mean, what is that? I don't what know. Is that, 20%? Like, you are, That's you are 20%? still giving you are still giving him too much credit. I hey, man, like you All said, right. you got to be ready for that one pounce though. That's he's it. sitting. He's That's sitting over. over there looking like he belongs in the Duck Dynasty family. All proud of wow. himself because you just gave him twenty percent chance that he could beat a tiger. And look, are you a quick guy? Are you? Can you run around a little bit? I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. When it comes down to it, you know, <laughs> yeah. All right, hey, so, so I mean, you said no. Quick in there, man. <laughs> that right look. there tells you no. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm almost thirty, right? Which at first there there will be some of our listeners who are like, oh, thirty, that is young, right? But I'm almost thirty, and I did ten years in 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 the army, right? My knees are completely shot, and um, something happened. Like I think my my wife was holding our baby, and I'm I'm kind of laying in bed, um, on my on my back, like horizontal, and she's vertical, right? And she's holding the baby. I'm on my back. And I hear her say, oh, God, right? And it, to me, that says there's spit everywhere. So I, like, jump out of bed and, and do the most athletic thing I've done in a very long time, right? And you years. just hear y- years, right? Only two because I've been out for a little bit, and I had to <laughs> actually work out when I was in. But I jumped up. You heard my knees go pop, 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 right, as they hit the ground because of – the athletic move I had to do to like, I threw my legs over her, right. To get on the other side of the bed to grab a yeah. burp cloth to give to her. Right. And it turns out that she was just saying, Oh God, cause the baby flung her head. Cause the baby doesn't know how to like hold up her head had nothing to do with burp cloth. And I looked at her and I said, don't you dare make me ever do anything athletic ever again. <laughs> I cannot move like that, but I was terrified. So All right. am, am I, am I athletic? The answer to that question is, it depends on the situation. And I think with the Tiger, <laughs> yes. Uh, you're building your case, man. You are. It sounds <laughs> Thank like you. you got great reflexes. <laughs> I, I'd pay to see it, Kyle. You'd pay to see I, it? <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd pay to see it. But, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't you. think – once again, I don't think he's going to win. I, I would pay to see it, but – it'd be better. It'd be a better virtual fight because if he if it is a real fight, like I lose a co-host. That's true. It's entertaining yeah. and you lose the co-host, so it's like win-win kind well, of thing. Well, I mean – yeah, Everybody yeah. I mean, depends on how you look at it. <laughs> so let's uh, let's hop into some of the the football talk because this, we uh, yeah this we do is, have a, a limited amount of time with Casey's schedule. Um, let's start off. We're doing mainly Jets talk. We'll obviously get into some some Bills talk a little bit with uh, <laughs> Zach. I think you have some some questions for us possibly. Um, but let's start off with the coach and Casey. I know when well, we were talking beforehand, you want you had a couple things you wanted to know about the yes. Jets' new coach. Yes, I did. And for those who are listening, you're like, they're about to, they're going to talk about the Jets. I don't want y'all to sit there and think like, well, this is a Bills podcast. I don't want to hear anything about the Jets. But here's the thing, right? You need to know your enemy, right? If we just sit there and we're like, you know, why why should we fear the Jets? Why should we or not fear the Jets? Like these are things that I want to know about, right? So when you go into the matchup with them, are you nervous about game day? No, it's the same old Jets. Well. Is it the same old Jets? And that, that's the kind of question that I want to know, Zach. You have a new coach. You have a new GM. This seems to happen not not just with the Jets, with a couple other teams, but you kind of see it every time a team comes in there. They get a new coach. They get a new quarterback. And it's like, this is the year. This is it, right? If you're in Tennessee, we'd be walking around saying, this feels like 98, right? Why is this time different? Why is it different with this coach? And this quarterback, as opposed to other years past, you know, it's a great question, Casey. And um, a lot of it, you, you really, it might be the same old Jets. You know, we don't know. It could, there's always that possibility. But for one thing, I'm confident is they finally brought in a guy that can command a room, is the leader of the organization clearly, and is not this like 
weird, freaky eyed guy <laughs> who's who, who claims to be this offensive guru. You know, everybody that talks to Robert Sala loves the guy. He's very charismatic. He, he's well spoken, you know, energy, man. I mean, that's what this team needs. When you're a young rebuilding team, you need that energy in the room, in the organization with everybody, with all positional groups. And I think the last couple times the Jets have tried to do it, it's been impulse hires with God knows who is telling the owner that this guy is an offensive genius. Who knows? That's a whole other topic. But finally, now you got a guy that comes in. He's going to work with a new quarterback and his in his offensive coordinator he brought over from San Fran, uh, LaFleur's brother. So that that already I like right away. If I'm going to bring in a new quarterback or a new coach, I want it together. You know, I don't want I don't want one or the other. I don't want a new quarterback with a, a reoccurring coach or vice versa. You know what I mean? Um but now, finally, you got guys that are, are, are looking forward to being in the building when at times maybe, you know, you're 0-8, 0-9 last year, and you're looking across the way, you see who's at the helm. You're like, man, like, what are we doing out here, guys? You know, like, this guy doesn't doesn't give two craps about us. He's over talking to the reporters. So everything I've read about the guy is good. Again, it's one thing for Robert Sala to come in, be the guy, and not have the results, right? Be, oh, rah, rah, energy, all gas, no brakes, you know, like, but – he is preaching to the players. This is how we're going to do it. And that's how you start to build a culture. And I'm sure like your, your bills are very familiar with, you need stability. You need that quarterback head coach relationship. Very good. And throughout the whole building. So I think it's going to be much different this time around. They're rebuilding the right way. Joe Douglas has done a tremendous job drafting so far. I know you got to see how these guys play uh, to see if some of these uh, picks have hit. But look, he's done the right thing with the trades. He's done the right thing in free agency. I, I think they're they're really in an upward trajectory now, and that that is it's been a long time since I've been able to say that because for a while it's just been like, what the hell are we doing? Like, what are the Jets doing? Yeah. So like last year when you were on, we had a similar conversation, and I like I completely agree everything with, that you were saying about Robert Sala. Like, he seems like he is the right man for the job. Last year when we were doing this. We were talking about Adam Gase, and you were. It seemed like it was more you were trying to convince yourself that he was still going to be able to do it, and that all, like all of the right pieces were in place. But I mean, we've talked about it throughout this offseason. I hate that I like some of the moves the Jets have been making. When it was time for the draft, I was like, "Damn, like I don't want them to take that guy. <laughs> I wanted him." Literally, yeah. like one of the guys that I was talking about pre-draft. I mean, he was a later pick, but like Jameen Sherwood, really liked him pre-draft. Really liked Elijah Moore pre-draft. Like, really liked a lot of the guys that the Jets have been targeting, and I'm not a big fan of that. However, like you <laughs> said, we got to see it on the field. But I do think, like, yeah, Robert Sala seems like he is the right guy for the job. Very similar to how, although I think it was a little bit more of like that splash type of hire because he was a bigger name, but still very similar to when the Bills went out and they brought in McDermott. It's a no nonsense. We're gonna come in. We're gonna do the right things say the right things and we're going to build this organization from the ground up. And I hate that I can say that about the jets right now, because I I, will get into what we think they're going to do like during the season a little bit later, but I think they're on the right trajectory. I can say that at at the moment. Yeah. And and like you said, it was similar with McDermott, like it's, it's his way or, or, you know, the highway, like you're not, you're not getting away with it in practice or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like he has been the guy that comes in and players listen you know, when you're, when you're this rah-rah type of energy, that can kind of rub people the wrong way, you know? And, and maybe it's like, oh, you know, what does this guy accomplish? Blah, blah, blah. Is his first time as a head coach? What What is going on? People listen, man. I, I, I've read multiple articles from, from, from different reporters that say the players just love the guy. He's very energetic in practice. Uh, he's communicating with every single positional group when it seemed like Adam Gase was just worried about his, his terrible offense, you know, and then going to talk to reporters. So it's like, how do you expect to have success in the locker room and build that winning culture that, you know, the Jets are going to have to do if they want to compete with with the likes of the Bills and, and, and other teams in the AFC East? So I, I think it's it's a great hire and I'm excited to see him on the sideline. Yeah, it, there, it seems like there. it's kind of like the analogy of building a house. If you build a house on like sand, not really going to work. You build a house on that concrete pavement, it's going to work. It seems like they have the right foundation. And I, once again, I don't like that. So <laughs> we've talked about the coach. We've talked about kind of the background of the team now, the players. Do you want to go free agency first or do you want to do the draft? Um, I guess we can start with free agency. That's fine. Right? I think that was free agency kind of before the draft technically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, most, most of free agency happens before the draft. So yeah. 
you had a couple of bigger signings. One, yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, one of them was a guy that Bills Mafia was all in on, Carl Lawson. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is a guy who played in Casey's hometown, a current residence of Corey Davis because he's out in Tennessee. There's some other guys that you Mac guys picked Boy, up Mac also. Boy as well. Like, who who do you look at as the really big? This is the guy that we needed to get type of signing in free agency. Was there a guy that stand, stood out stood out more than the others? Absolutely, I think it was it was two guys especially. The first guy you named, Carl Lawson. I mean, it was a hefty contract, but I mean that that is the name of the game in the in the edge rushing space these these days. That's how much you just have to pay for an elite pass rusher now. Does he put those elite pass rushing stats on paper quite yet in, in his previous seasons with Cincy? No, it's not quite there. But look, in Robert Sala's defense, he's all about that defensive line. And I think when they bring in Carl Lawson off the edge, because the Jets had no pass rusher, they had Jabari Zuniga uh, trying, to, trying to pass rush, who, who shows some promise. But I mean, come on, he's not, you know, not going to get you as many sacks or whatever a year. Um, so that, that signing definitely stuck out to me because that was an immediate need. You had to add some, some sort of talent on that position. He's a relentless guy, high motor. That that's who Salah wants on the defensive line. And then you shift right next to him with Sheldon Rankins, another fantastic interior defensive mm-hmm. lineman that is going to pair so well with with the young star that we have in Queen and Williams. So I think Robert Sala made it obviously pretty clear we got to address the defense, put some more talent in here because there's just too many holes on this Jets team. There was going into the offseason, the Jets had so much cap space, mm-hmm. but instead of dishing out contracts i was mentioning it to, to casey before we even started recording like instead of dishing contracts out to guys that are just you know veterans and you just just because you got the cap space just giving them huge deals like they're not going to turn out i think the approach that the jets had in free agency was very smart you deal you know you spend the money on, on the guys that you really want to build around on your defense with with lawson and sheldon rankins and then you bring in another guys on one-year deals to prove themselves that are also still young talented fill holes that, that the defense really needed. So those were definitely the two that stuck out. And then, of course, you mentioned it. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Corey Davis. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be tough for him right away to be that number one guy, I think, because he's just, you know, that's not a, a role that he was used to in Tennessee. I know he's a fifth overall pick, but it it, it will take a little bit for him, I feel like, to, to get to that point where he's an established number one guy. I, I a Big physical guy can go up and get it, so I think that's great for our rookie quarterback. Um, but again, we just had to put some playmakers in the offense. Joe Douglas did, did smart deals, spent the big money where he had to. So that that's that's what I was I was most proud of because it's been a disaster with Jets free agency <laughs> in previous years. So yeah, they made a mess of things. Yeah. I think getting Sheldon Rankins was probably more beneficial than Lawson. In in my mind, like Rankins was he was. He was one of my top tier, like, I want the Bills to go and get him. Uh, mostly because our run defense was just absolutely horrible, you know, awful, <laughs> just non- horrible? non-existent, yeah. non-existent. But if you got somebody like him, and of course, uh, injuries kind of got in his way when he was he was with the Saints, right? Which is why I was like, hey, the Bills should go get him because his price tag is going to be lower, right? Um, but getting him like that, that right there, when you look at the Bills side of things and you're like, well, where's the run game, right? If you have somebody in the interior like that, that you have to play twice a year, how are you going to run the ball? And of course, I know Bills fans who are listening now are like, don't have to run the ball when you have a $250 million quarterback throwing it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, I, and, I get, and I get it, right? But I I still, and it's came out on training camp on the Bills side that, you know, um, they're focusing a lot on the run right now. Like they're pushing the run heavily, right? And then you turn around, you start looking at, everybody else in the division, the Jets, and that's what we were talking about. And they've got someone like Rankins who can go out there and who can do what needs to be done and stop that run. It's like, okay, well, let's turn around. Let's, you know, lean heavily on the pass. But talk about the pass, and I guess that could lead us into, you know, the draft. You got my boy out of Florida State, um, safety, who I I was high on, but I was not high on – like a lot of people in the Buffalo Fanatics organization who are saying like we need to get him or bust. What do you what do you think about him? Yeah, he I thought was a phenomenal pick. I know obviously did not play due to injury, right? This, this real quick, this we're talking about yeah. Hamza, right? For anybody yeah. who doesn't know, because you yeah, didn't and, mention and by name, Nazar- and the, Nazar- the, Nazar- 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 Yes, Nazar- Nazar- I was going to say Nazar- 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 Yeah, yeah
I think towards yeah. ACL. Yeah, and then but then the previous two years of Florida State was was a really standout player. Uh, m- Might have been you know maybe like a, a, a top three three round pick, but previous to the injury, so great value there. And I think especially when we're having to play the Buffalo Bills, you need some speed on the outside. And he, I know he's a Correct. safety draft wise, but I feel like I you know I've read every when we drafted immediately more of a hybrid role could turn him into an outside yes. linebacker, cover the edges a little bit better. Uh, one of the other free agency signings, uh, Davis from the Detroit Lions, is another speedy linebacker that we're gonna need if you want to contain a Josh Allen, uh, you know, some of these guys that can really get loose and just cause havoc for your defenses. So that very great. The value picks late in the draft. I mean, those are the guys you got to yes. go after, right? The guy I think the, the the previous draft before he hasn't you know hasn't paid out great, but Bryce Hall was a similar situation with an injury. Could have been a top pick injury uh, went back, but. Yeah, I, I love the pick. I, I hope that he's able to use him. And that's, again, that's what the, the Jets just needed. Some playmakers, man. Some guys out there to just make some plays, run around, contain the edge a little bit. Because the interior is pretty, it's set now. It's pretty solid. You got the building blocks with Williams. And now you add Rankins next to him and, and Carl Lawson. So it's just uh, filling out the holes of the defense. I thought I thought it was a great pick. Yeah, I, I like I said already, I really like what the Jets did in the draft. Obviously, the biggest question mark from the entire draft, and we can just move right up to the top of the draft at this point because we got to talk about him. Zach Wilson, quarterback. What a name! To be, what a name, by the way. Supposed to be the face of the franchise. That's what they want. <laughs> what but a like, pretty we'll, face! We'll see. What a twelve-year-old. <laughs> what a. What a <laughs> Looks like he's about to teach an SAT course, right? Wasn't you guys see that meme? Oh man, I couldn't unsee Look, it. It was funny. I got it. It was funny. He looks like he should be like taking a lock off of his locker and like going to homeroom. <laughs> so, so we can make stupid jokes like that, but like and we're going to <laughs> what? Yeah, absolutely. We are right. I am, I am not one to not be, you know, into all that, but what's going to happen if my man pans out and all of a sudden, like we're going into jets week and we're like, shit, this 12 year old's been this. <laughs> This 12 year old's fitting to come at us. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my biggest fear is like, no one wants to be beat up by a fifth grader. You know what I'm saying? And like that, that could happen because Zach Wilson has the talent to go out there and, and do it. Yeah. I Look, it, it made, I know the debate and, and I guess it was kind of like a jet smoke screen to see what people would offer for Sam Darnold. It was, oh, do you keep him and extend him on a reasonable deal? Or do you reset the quarterback, you know, contract clock and draft Zach Wilson? I always thought it was an absolute no brainer. You just watch the tape on this kid. He's absolutely electric, can do yes. it on with the feet, improviser. He's got a cannon of an arm, can just sling that thing downfield. Um, you know, I know we're making extremely drastic comparisons here, but the throwing motion, similar to Aaron Rodgers, just just you know, just flicks it and it's going 60 yards in the yeah. air. Um, but you know, he looks like a young kid. I get it. And when he talks, he probably even sounds younger than me because I probably don't have the deepest voice either. So I feel like people in the huddle initially are like, oh, you know what? The, what's going on? You know, who's who's this kid out of BYU? You know, whatever. But when he gets on the field, I, I, I think Josh Allen's a good comparison to this as well. He's a football player, man. Like he he wants it. He wants the contact. He's going to play hard for this team. And I think that's where the, the leadership you'll start to see the leadership qualities come out in him where the team is going to rally around this kid. Because he just wants to be out there. He's having fun. He loves the game. I'm, I'm excited, man. I, it's been a long time since we had kind of that mobile. I mean, Darnold could use his feet a little bit. But, I mean, you know, again, he didn't have the much success trying to do that. And the ball security issues was, was all over the place. But, you know, this kid's going to be electric. I, I'm excited. It, it, it will take some time, I think, to adjust. It's always going to take time for a rookie quarterback unless you're this generational guy like Trevor Lawrence who might just light it up the first game of the year. We have no idea. But, um, you know. He's not going to, you know, we can't rush the kid. You can't have unnecessary expectations on him. Oh, rookie of the year, this, 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 that. Let him be him. Go out there, get adjusted to the offense, start getting that chemistry with some of the other playmakers we brought in. Um, I think the kid is going to be good for New York, man. He, he's well-spoken, got a good head on his shoulders, and, and that's, that's what you need to survive in a market that is brutal with bad quarterback play. Absolutely brutal. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough to find a good quarterback that, is going to end up being the, the guy who leads your franchise from pretty much nothing. Cause like, that's what the jets have been the last yeah, couple of years sh- into shit. potentially making the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's yes. Like I, I'll say not it. even, I mean, the bills were there for 17 years. Like it, it's tough to find that guy. Who's going to be the leader of the team and actually give you consistent play at the quarterback position. 
So I, I think one of the things that I'm actually interested in is, and you mentioned it a little bit, like not too high of expectations, but I've actually heard a couple people mention like they, they might, and betting people, they might take Zach Wilson as the, like, let's take him to lead the league in interceptions because he's going, he like th- he's going to play the entire season. It doesn't matter if he plays poorly or not. They got nobody else. And I, that would hey, worry me if what, I was, if I was you, what guys. Other, that, would, that would worry me that he, they have nobody else, no veteran presence really, but he's going to play the entire season. How, how worried would you be if that situation does pan out? If he struggles a little bit, does end up leading the league in interceptions, but like, who knows after that? Like, that could be a good learning experience. How do you? How would you feel about that? And I know that's kind of like a, a doomsday scenario. No, no, I see. I see the the question there, and and it's again, it's it's the whole Jets thing because if you start a season zero and four, and you got you know eight picks and two touchdowns or whatever, I mean, it, it the pressure mounts for a kid, and it's going to be tough as a rookie. You know, look, if that happens, you got to take the positives away that you can from the season. Every single game, every single series for Zach Wilson is going to be a learning experience, you know, and he's learning a whole new offense. You know, it's not the Uh same stuff he was running in BYU with all these uh, these other guys on his team that were, you know, it's a good team BYU. But, you know, he had he finally has some playmakers and athletes to to run around with. So I think um, I think it's really tough. You got to have you got to keep that confidence. The coaching staff has to keep supporting the kid no matter what. Cause he, he is the guy. And I think, I, I don't know if you mentioned it before, but like when you think, when you even think you found that guy that can lead your franchise, be the building block, you got to take him and support mm-hmm. him no matter what till the end. So I'm confident Salah, Joe Douglas, the entire organization confident in this kid. They wouldn't have drafted him otherwise. Um, if he has a disaster year, Hey, that happens. You brush yourself up. All, all can go is up. I mean, that that's kind of the attitude that, that he's going to have to have. Um, Leading the league in interceptions, though, I mean, I don't know. That's yeah, I'd, I would be like, surprised because I feel like he he's not going to do you're not going to expect to do like way too much where he's just being sloppy with the ball. I think in the system that he has, it's going to be a lot of you know run pass options. Really seeing seeing the defenses a little bit clearer than before. Where it was just like with Gase's offense, it was just this this these were the sets, and it was just a disaster for Darnold. So I'm I'm confident he won't do that. But I understand your question. It'll be yeah. it'll be tough in New York to to deal with that but, criticism. But honestly, that might build him up to be even better. You know, that, that's that's how you got to look at it. Yeah, I mean, you, you really just for a guy like him, you just want to see consistent improvement wherever that improvement starts out. It's more about the end goal than that first year immediate success like it, he absolutely. I, I mean, the biggest comparison that he got to a current quarterback and Bills fans won't like hearing this. They never did. But like it's it's Josh Allen. Played at a smaller level school, D one obviously still, but like it wasn't. They, he wasn't playing against Alabama. He wasn't playing against like the SEC, Big Ten schools all the time. He wasn't playing against as good of competition. So it's a big jump in talent level that he's going to be playing against. Speed, physicality, Speed, yep. all of that stuff. But as long as you can see that consistent improvement, like Bills fans saw with Josh Allen throughout his entire time so far in Buffalo, yeah. that's really what you're looking for. Yeah, and I hope I hope because I just I saw a take from this guy on Fox Sports that one of the laziest takes I've ever seen, and the, the Johnny Manziel Zach Wilson comparisons gotta stop. It is not at all the same thing whatsoever. The kid is built different. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He's six two. He's a big boy. I mean, Johnny Manziel was definitely undersized for his position. So those let's stop right now. I'm the, I'm the Jets fan right here on this podcast saying let's kick those in the butt but uh yeah i'm with you uh we'll see we'll see what happens i think i think he's got a bright future and he's got all the tools to to be good in this new age of quarterbacks where you got to be good on your feet and you got to be quick with with your release and getting the ball out quick so um i'm excited and the other thing with him in in terms of that like josh allen zach wilson comparison um because like i said that's that's one of the better comparisons like the johnny yeah. man's out one that's just that's lazy it's lazy honestly it, it's bait. just like a, oh this guy came from money it's it's he's johnny Manziel. yes that, like yep. that's just lazy in general so dumb but the jets have actually put zach wilson in a better position his rookie year than josh allen was in albeit like josh allen came in and the head coach was already established some of the some of the core players were already established but not on the offense they had like the Bills had to revamp the entire offense out of outside of pretty much Deion Dawkins. That's like everything else has changed almost. So the Jets doing what they've done, where you know the offensive line has been 
definitely improved over the last two years with both tackle positions, uh, a couple of guards. Like they're they're still working some stuff out, but they've definitely set the building blocks for a good offensive line. The wide receivers, we're, we're gonna have to talk about the wide receivers, and then running backs also. Like there's, we, you guys got a good running back in the draft this year too. Like they've put the pieces around him to hopefully allow him to succeed. Whereas a lot of times I think you see rookies come in and there's just nothing to help them out. So I, as much as I don't want to see him succeed um, because I don't want the Jets to end up being good in a couple of years, it, he has a good chance. He has a better chance than a lot of other rookies coming in do just because of what I, I think has been put around him. Yeah, it's, it's a great point. And that's the thing. We were in a position where you're like, oh, we can take this kid because we're in a much better spot to, to help him succeed early on in his career. It might not happen his rookie year, obviously. There, like you said, there's still some building to be made. But there are a couple of young, exciting playmakers that he can get the ball out to, and he's not going to have to do it on his own. You know, There are a couple of electric pass-receiving uh, backs, too, out of the backfield that will make Zach Wilson's life a little bit better. You know, When you slap you know, a little past his prime Le'Veon Bell next to Darnold, oh, that's wow, that's a Band-Aid. You know, that's not going to do it. Getting some of these guys, like you mentioned, and addressing it in free agency too, as well as in the draft. I mean, they, they're Joe Douglas. It's my guy, man. He's been been doing a very solid job so far. Let's just you keep building. Next year's another big year for the draft. It's a, it's a great position. It's an upward trajectory to to Casey's old point. The different Jets this time around. You know what I mean? Building. Well, well, we'll see. What yeah, other I mean, gamblers? We're not hoping. Uh, what, what other gamblers are you talking to? I hope it's not. I hope it's not you. I hope you weren't sitting there like I've talked to other no. gamblers, but it's it's I didn't actually. Say I talked me. to. I said I heard. I, I wasn't talking. It was just stuff I listened uh, to. Uh, I was on a podcast. Well, they're probably <laughs> they're probably dumb, anyways. Um, no, Zach Wilson. Legit. I I will go on record and say he's not going to lead the league in interceptions. Um, I don't. I don't believe he's going to. Um, and I, I think he has a good head on his shoulders. I mean, I, I let Zach listen to the, um, the interview after practice today where he went out and he said, you know, you know, sometimes maybe in practice I'm looking and I'm reading the defense and I'm wondering, can I get away with that? Let me try and see if I can get away with that, right? And um, in other situations when it's actually game time, I can think back on this one situation and be like, you know, I tried that during practice and it didn't work. Let me just go ahead and check this down real quick. Right. And it, it's stuff like that that you start realizing like, oh, OK, well, hold up now. This guy, his football IQ is really high, you know, and, and when you when you talk about a franchise quarterback and I mean, we can just blow out the Johnny Manziel comparisons right now. Uh, Johnny's football IQ was not high. Like he he did not have it when it came to, you know, reading a defense or anything like that. He did not know how to do that. Um so you're right. That's a very lazy take. But to have a quarterback in their rookie year come out and say something like that to New York's media, like that's big time, right? Because if he had come out there and he had said, you know, well, this is just practice. You know what I'm saying? I'm making mistakes right now. If he had said anything to that effect, right, New York would have ran wild with it, right? They would have been like, Zach Wilson doesn't know what he's doing. Zach Wilson doesn't know this. Zach Wilson doesn't know that. Like, whatever. I don't care how he looks, right? As a as a fan of that team, if I heard, heard my quarterback say that, I'm like, wow, okay, thank you for your leadership, right? And for a starving fan base, because the Jets are starving, right? Zach, I, I guarantee you, you weren't a little kid and you were like, I'm going to be a Jets fan. I guarantee you, your dad was a Jets fan, right? I guarantee you, your grandfather was a Jets fan. I guarantee you that your great grandfather was a Jets fan. Like, it's, it's ran in your family and you're a starving, starving, starving fan base. So Wait till you hear his other teams. Oh my goodness! I don't even want to know. Probably the Mets. <laughs> Pro probably the Mets or some some stupid shit like that. But like, oh, yeah. it's a starving, starving fan base. So to get a kid in here, there's a a little bit of light that you can see, and you're like, I hope you perform. And with all quarterbacks, you give them three years, right? You don't expect him to come out there right now and lead you to the promised land. Like you don't expect no, him no. to go out there and take you to the Super Bowl. But winning. Because I, I know we're going to get into season predictions, but I think the ceiling for the Jets, and don't crucify me for this, but it's five or six wins this year, right? 
And I think if that happens and Zach Wilson stays healthy and he plays a full 16 games and you start to see the progression of that and he wins you five to six games, right? As a fan, I'm like, okay, bet. And then the next year, I want him to win me eight to nine games, right? And then eventually on the third year, I want that to go into double digits. Like that's the progression that I want to see from Zach Wilson. And unfortunately, Bill's Mafia, that actually might be the case because Joe Douglas is the truth. Robert Sala is, from what we know, the truth. I do not care if you point out that the Bills ran all over his defense, right? I don't care about (laughs) that, right? He is the truth when it comes to his leadership and that players actually want to play for him. Players came to the Jets not because it was the Jets, but because Robert Sala was there. They wanted to play for him. There were tons of people in free agency that wanted to play for that coach. So having someone who players want to play before having a GM that's not an idiot and then having a quarterback who as of right now it's August he's a rookie but him showing the leadership and the poise in front of the media to say something like hey I'm learning and I will continue to learn right that's big time for me so yeah I I love the kid I'm a big fan of his yeah, I keep look. I keep complimenting the things that the Jets are doing and the players they're bringing in, and I don't like doing it, but I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep being honest as long as I think that they're bringing in good players. And obviously, like the question earlier was not me saying I think that he's going to throw that many and lead the yes, league in interceptions. <laughs> but like, yes, it was. I, it, I mean, you got you got to. No, I, I don't <laughs> okay, actually okay. think that's going to happen. Lock don't look at it. Don't in. you look? Lock hold on, it up. hold on. You are <laughs> no, no, no Zach. You are you are falling. You are falling for Casey's tricks right now. <laughs> you are falling right into his trap. <laughs> Ain't no tricks. But Ain't no tricks. I, look, I like I like Zach Wilson. I think he has the potential to, at the end of the year, be like legitimately the second best quarterback in the division. And I don't know if that's because I believe in him so much early on, or because the other quarterbacks aren't somebody that I believe in. But like long term, yeah, I, mean, I think that has the potential to be true also, yeah. because I think he does have all of that potential. So. Yeah, they, I think there's a, a possibility that you guys got a really good quarterback of the future. And I think to, to Casey's point, too, with with this fan base, the, the New York Jets fans are passionate, man. I can tell you what, from from having terrible teams, you wouldn't you wouldn't New really Jersey. necessarily uh, feel it. <laughs> you wouldn't yeah. really necessarily yeah, feel it in the stadium. Like no matter what team they roll out there, they they want their team to win. They want them to be competitive and they want them to be hard nosed, gritty team. So. Again, you, you mentioned the five, six win total. I think that's we'll get into those I know later. But you just want Zach Wilson to improve and learn and keep learning and not be complacent in his rookie year because all of the all time greats are never complacent. They're always trying to get better in different ways. And it is never gonna be a way where like, okay, I accomplished this, take the foot off. It's all gas, no brakes. Like Salah says, you know, gotta keep going, progress through the season. It's a learning experience. The scrimmage where where he had this quote or the, the practice, whatever, it's it's his first like live action with with NFL players <laughs> and talent. So he he like he's he's learning on the fly right now. He he's a good good kid, good head on shoulders. That's what you need in New York. Let's see, man. Excited. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. So if, I mean we we just did what like 15, 20 minutes on Zach Wilson. <laughs> I, I think yeah, we've I mean, covered as much as we need to there. Um, it's well deserved. Um, yeah I, I mean it is. If he if he wins a Super Bowl for we're really the jumping Jets. there. No, 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 no stop. Really? I'm not. I'm Ooh. not saying. I'm not saying Ooh. now. My my daughter will ripped obviously, in the comments. <laughs> I, oh, listen, listen to the listen to the show before you rip me. Um, if Zach Wilson wins the Super Bowl for the Jets, do you think they'll actually move back to New York, or will they continue <laughs> to be in New Jersey? frauds that's what that's what they are frauds because because at the end of the day is that that's not that's not a super bowl for the state of new york i mean i won't claim that i won't won't claim (laughs) that i wouldn't claim that why would you claim that that's not that's not a super bowl for new york have either of you have either of you two been to east rutherford new jersey before why would I I've, want to go? I have to passed by. I've New passed Jersey. by it multiple times. I'm just times. saying it is it not, is, It's New Jersey. It's not it New is, York. It's hardly New Jersey, man. Let me tell you. I mean, why? Backyard, why would I want to go the there? The backyard of the stadium is Manhattan. You can see the skyline from the stadium. That's all I care about, man. New York in front of the team. That's all. That's all that matters. There's two teams I, in New York. There's three teams. Should I say there's there's not there's, there's, there's not one team teams. the other there's two one teams team. the stadiums are located I understand <laughs> so I here's it. here's here's the thing would um 
Would Spider Man protect East Rutherford? No, probably he he's right there, man. <laughs> no, no, he would not. Me? If he you're telling me, would, yes, you're telling yes. me, I, if there I, was I, a I'm villain right now. on MetLife Stadium, he wouldn't go. He's on it's, Empire State his, I mean, it's not nah, his man, jurisdiction. Not, yeah, not my it's territory. Not his jurisdiction. Not his jurisdiction. Who's in New Jersey yeah. again? Batman? Who is it? I don't know. I mean, no, it would, it would, it would be the Fantastic I, Four. Like they would cover that. You would have the oh, Fantastic okay. Four other than Spider Man. Yeah, you don't, you don't that's, not bad. that's pretty good. I'll take that. Man. You, you don't get the loser. Avengers. You don't that's even not get the bad Avengers. at all. You get the B team. <laughs> oh. I'm telling you, man. He could be there in <laughs> three swings. He's at the stadium. But he would. He could, but right he's not there. going to. But he's he like, man. I don't. I don't step foot in Jersey. Spider Man do it. National hero. National. Nah. 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 All right, now we're right, so, me he's getting up to Buffalo before MetLife Stadium. It's ah, New York City. Yeah, New York City. Yeah, it's, it's New, New York. York. Right. That's New, New York. York. I, yeah, yeah it takes he's two hours. York York. That's good luck. Uh, it's done by then. Uh, by the time he gets uh, up there, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Uh, so I, I did have a couple of other like Jets specific questions before we get into yours. CJ Mosley, real quick, like, do you do you expect him to just step back into what he was before? I said that if he does. He is the best linebacker in the division, but I'm not certain that he will. Yeah, it's a good question because uh, the last time I saw him played, he looked like the defensive player of the year against your Buffalo Bills, uh, just killing killing it on both sides of the ball with forcing the fumble and the pick six. But I think hopefully – force the pick six, by the way. He didn't force fumble he had, I believe, right? And then he had a pick six. Yeah, it just wasn't game. a forced pick six. It was it – was, Accidental. Oh, sorry, sorry my bad, my bad. either way, he was playing like out of his mind, and then he, he was throwing, and it all went downhill from there. But I think you look at him signing to a huge deal again, another guy that was brought in on a, on a massive contract, and at the time was one of the best linebackers in football. All this time off that he's had, I'm really hoping that his body is ready. You know, I, I think I think opting out of of last year's season again that. It, Smart decision. A, a lot of players did that because of the, the, you know, the coronavirus concerns and all that. Taking the time off, getting your body right. I think he's that leader that the defense needs, and you need that guy right in the middle to to hold it down, especially in Robert Sala's defense with the with the defensive line getting after it. You got to have a guy back there that can orchestrate everything. So I'm very hopeful that he can. Um, it's essentially a contract year for CJ Mosley. That I, I've read about his contract situation, like the money he's slated to make next year. I don't know if the Jets are even going to keep pursuing that. They might just end up trying to move on from C.J. Mosley if he's not returning back to form. Or, which I'm hoping for, and I know you kind of mentioned it, like what ex- expectations. Like, I hope he's a great leader, has a great year, is back to the to the linebacker that we know and have seen before. And maybe they, you know, restructure the contract or something like that to help work around this. I think he's making like $18 million next year or something. I mean, that's just a massive figure for, for a linebacker who's going to be turning – past his prime after this year so um i hope i hope that he comes back and returns the form because the defense needs it in the middle there yeah i mean i i hope he doesn't but like you said i mean if he does like that that makes the defense so much better than without him because there, i mean there are some there's there's some holes on the defense um but in general like there, there's they're building a unit there and if he's there that unit is a whole lot stronger than if he's not um, and if he's there yeah. playing well, so I guess we Absolutely. could just transition right into what you think and I'll give you mine and then we'll see if you agree and maybe Casey will agree or disagree too, but we'll, we'll do the worst unit on the jets and then the best unit. We'll finish out with that one before our expectations of the season. I personally look at the jets and I, I'm not even going to say they're secondary as a whole because they do have a really good safety in Marcus may. And then there's potentially some other guys at, at safety that, will be good, maybe not great, but they're corners. Like your, your corners are rough. Yeah, it's rough. really, really rough. Like that, when I look at the team, that is the easiest position group to take advantage of, which, and we'll get into this, I think that that bodes really well for the Bills. The guy on the Bills how much does that scare you that the Jets secondary, and look, once again, specifically the corners, are bad, like really, really bad. Yeah. I absolutely agree with you. That's probably the worst position group on the Jets right now. Um, I, I don't feel great about that position group. It's it's not ideal. I think addressing the defensive line is only going to hope you know hopefully benefit the secondary. You know, give them a little bit more uh, easier time covering guys out there. It's going to be hard to stop some of these elite receivers with some of the corners we got. I mean, we're going to have to re- rely on some discreet coverages and whatnot. Robert Sala is going to have to pick up his uh, his defense very well there. Um, 
But, you know, last year and, and the previous year even, the secondary has been so dreadful. And with no pa- pass rush, I mean – any quarterback can sit back there and, and, and wait till a receiver breaks off the top of his route and, and find the open man. You know, it's just going to happen. It's going to be much easier to get first downs in third, third and longs. You know, I think addressing the, the, the defensive line and having some speed on the outside with the linebackers will, will benefit the, the, the corners. And I got to say, all the corners are young. You know, they're, they're decently young and trying to prove something uh, mostly on rookie deals or one year deals. So I think that's good from, from the, from the positional group standpoint. Um, but man, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be extremely hard to, to guard that man, Stefan Diggs. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard mm-hmm. to guard uh, you know, a couple of the guys they got in Miami and in New England now. So, you know, everybody everybody on that defensive line has to show out to help the secondary. Cause you know, this defense, I I think the defense can be strong, but again, there's still some holes on 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 either side. So it, I agree with you though. Definitely, definitely the, the worst position group for the Jets going into this season. Hopefully, Hopefully one of these young guys breaks out, though. That's that's kind of what blessed Austin. I mean, I like him a lot, but he he had some wild quotes lately about how he wants to be perceived <laughs> at the end of the season. I want to see. Results. Let's see some results and, and, and play your role well out there. Well, it does not bode well for him that he might have to see Stefan Diggs individually <sighs> twice. And oh, then man. either Jalen Waddell, if he's healthy or like any Will, of the Will other Fuller, guys, Will if he's Fuller, healthy. if he's yeah. healthy, Devonte Parker. And like there's. It does not bode well for him that the wide receiving cores in the AFC East are getting a lot better. Definitely. So flip over to the other side of the ball, right? We we talked 20 to 30 to an hour long about Zach Wilson, <laughs> but let's let's talk about the offensive line, right? Does that offensive line not scare you? And and I and I understand, right? I understand. I'm trying to be very professional, especially with a rebuilding team. There are a ton of holes on a rebuilding team, right? There's a ton yep. of hope, right? But there's a ton of holes as well. And the offensive line as a whole is, well, it's shit, just to put it frank, right? <laughs> Does that not scare you when it comes to a rookie quarterback coming in there? How is he going to stay upright, especially when the Bills, right, at the, in, in actual the state of New York, that one team in New York, the Bills invested so heavily into their, their D line this offseason, right? Just the draft alone with Russo and with Basham, right? Does it yeah. not scare you that your offensive line is not there, right? And how do you see the Jets building it up to get better for Zach Wilson's case? Yeah, no, it's it's a good point. I think Makai Becton proved last year that he yes. is a piece, man. He is a building block there. One of the bright, young, you know, very talented left tackles in the league, in my opinion. You watched the tape last year. Not a lot of, of the high, you know, high guys in the league, like very talented pass rushers, had great success against Makai Becton. So at least I'm confident Zach Wilson's blind side is going to be covered. I'm, I'm at least happy yeah. about that. You got Becton in there. Elijah Vera Tucker, too, the guy who we traded up to get. Joe Douglas is an offensive line guy, man. When he sees something that he likes, he went up and got it. And I think – I don't know if they're going to slide Vera Tucker to left guard next to Becton. Um, I don't know if they want to play him on right tackle, so the tackles are kind of uh, you know even there, distributed. I don't know. Um, the line is building. You know, I, I wouldn't say yeah. it, it's complete shit like you, like you put it, but <laughs> – well, and and well, what, what's important for an offensive line, pieces. though, is also chemistry. And I think yes. bringing back a lot of the, the guys from last year, they're starting to realize, you know, the pass block, blocking sequences and how, how to protect a quarterback a little bit better. It also helps Zach Wilson has much better feet than some of our previous quarterbacks. So that helps a little bit. Um, but it's going to be it's going to keep building, whether that's through the draft or whether that's I know they were they were trying to be aggressive, I believe, on Thune, trying to get him in there. Uh, he would have been a great coup for the Jets to add to that offensive line, but that didn't that didn't happen, obviously. Um, but you know, it's going to take some time. I, I like the young pieces that were there, and if we got Becton and Vera Tucker on the left side, I'm I'm confident in that. I, I like that pairing right there. The rest There's, of the line, I, we'll see. They got some depth, so the platoon. Hopefully, you, you get some more depth and chemistry there. Um, but it's going to take you know another year or two to really see the strength of that offensive line. But Joe Douglas is, is an offensive line guy. You know, you can go in there, teach him a little something. You know, I, I think the Jets he's line. Not, I wouldn't say it's there. as bad. I don't think the Jets line is as bad as Casey said it was. It's not good, um, mm-hmm. but there's like I said, there's pieces. And mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're digging out of a hole right now, but there is a light 
or a, t- a tunnel. They're digging out of a tunnel. There's a light at the end of that tunnel with the offensive line because they have a couple of those important pieces, left tackle, wherever they want to put Elijah Vera Tucker, yeah. the right tackle, left guard, wherever. Like that's going to help be those kind of mainstays moving forward. So it'll be interesting if if they have a successful offensive line play or have – yeah, I mean, if they have successful offensive line play, that's going to bode really well for – just Zach Wilson in general, if they struggle, that's where all of those other concerns might come in. So how, how much are you concerned or are you concerned about the potential of that? Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned with the Jets run game. And now okay. I, I, I like the, the kid we drafted, um, Michael Carter out of uh, North Carolina, electric back, smaller uh, stature, you know, but uh, beast, man. Beast when he's running downhill out of the backfield can catch it. Tevin Coleman was a good uh, signing. It's going to be tough to kind of, you know, he's not really an every down back, but he'll be great for Zach Wilson as well. Um, I think the pass blocking will be will be a little bit better this year than, than previous years. The, the offensive line has a little bit of that chemistry. But run blocking and getting that run game established, which I think will be important for this offense, mm-hmm. it might be a struggle early on. And I think teams are going to understand that make it very difficult for us to run the ball and try and make Zach Wilson be uncomfortable and do things that he doesn't want to do, you know, try and really get him to out of his comfort zone. Um, so that's my worry of the, of the struggle with the offensive line there is that we're just not going to be able to run the ball and that's going to stall some drives and you got to be able to run the ball. And I know yeah. even the bills haven't had the best run game, but you have one of the best running quarterbacks in the league. So that helps usually, which I'm hoping Zach Wilson does the same. Um, but they got, you know, the jets have some young backs. They got some, explosiveness in him a couple of guys ty johnson or michael perrine we'll, we'll see you know how, how they fill into the to the roles um but that's my big concern with the offensive line how, how well are we going to be able to run the ball against some of these very good defensive and, teams in the afc and that makes sense because for a rookie quarterback having a, a steady running game or at least a running game that you can lean on it like that's extremely beneficial yeah. so if that if they're struggling there the passing game might struggle a little bit more too then like I, just kind of like the exact way you laid it out. Um, the last thing I want to do before we get into any predictions or anything like that, and then the the bill side of this discussion, um, best best position grouping on the Jets. I think it is. I think there's two position groups that could fall into this category. Defensive yeah. tackle is very strong, obviously, um, but I think when I look at the wide receiver group, what you guys are building, I think that is the probably the deepest position group, which. I would then kind of vault it to the best position group for the Jets. Yeah. But I could see how defensive tackle would obviously get the argument there too. But like there's just so many good pieces at wide receiver now. Corey Davis, Jamison Crowder, who we've we've talked about in the slot like a, a bunch this offseason. Um, I mean Elijah Moore drafting him is huge. Denzel Mims right now, like your second round pick, they're saying he's like sixth or seventh on the depth chart. Yeah. And I don't know if that's necessarily a, a a good thing for the wide receiver group or a bad thing for him. But like usually guys like that are going to get precedent and he's not because other guys are just doing better things than he is. Like how, how exciting is it to finally see a good wide receiver group in, I don't New Jersey. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just doing it. New Jersey again. (laughs) Um, Look, man, (laughs) it is exciting. Cause I tell you what, I do. I did like the Denzel Mim pick, uh, Mims pick last year. Obviously, he had some uh, some injury concerns, but that's tough. But he's a big physical receiver that I think can can definitely help the Jets this year. But there were just there's in the past two drafts alone. I guess you could go back to past three drafts. There's so many talented receivers that come in and make an immediate impact on these teams. So I was just very happy that they ended up with Elijah Moore in the second round. I thought he was definitely a first first yeah. rounded graded player. He is a guy that you can put anywhere on the field. I think he's going to thrive in the slot, especially. I mean, that's where Jamison Crowder mainly mainly uh, thrives in as well. Um, but y- you mentioned it, just deep, you know, because you got to be able to sub in guys out, fresh legs out there for Zach Wilson. I think there's a lot of versatility with all the receivers. You got guys that are going to be good red zone targets, which, which will be very important for this offense, and guys that are playmakers. You can get them into short screens, get them up, get them up the field, let them make plays. Elijah Moore is going to be exciting for me, man. I know, I know his boy AJ Brown in Tennessee he's, already he's kind of made his prediction that he might be offensive rookie of the year. Man, I'd be jumping for joy if that happened. I'm hoping it's a great year for him. Um, but then even like a Keelan Cole pickup, I think was was really good for the Jets to grab just more depth. And it's an exciting position and group 
that has just been very thin for way too long when the Jets notoriously have had pretty solid receivers for, for our mediocre quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the Elijah Moore pick was probably the one that hurt the most when the <laughs> Jets were able to make that pick, at least for me, because I was, before the draft on this show, I was saying, I like the Bills should just go ahead and take Elijah Moore. Just secure your wide receiver group for years to come with him, with Diggs, with Davis. Like, the, if you can do that, you're going to be great because he has the potential to be the best wide receiver in this rookie, cl- in the rookie class. Like, we could be talking about him at whatever pick 33 was it what somewhere around there yeah yeah somewhere around there we could be talking about him being the justin jefferson of the class and i'm not necessarily saying those numbers because those numbers were like all world decent situation jefferson like yeah yeah but like we could be talking about him being able to just far and away be the best wide receiver in this class at like a couple of years down the road, potentially. So I, that was a, that was a great pick that I think you guys honestly lucked into because of him sliding as far as he did. Yeah. No, you hit, you hit it nail on the head. And I think immediately after they got drafted already, Zach Wilson and Elijah Moore were getting in reps, you know, just going, throwing on their own, getting the feel for each other. Um, I hope I get to watch them for many, many years, man. Cause I'm excited about them. Both electric guys. Ah, I, finally, a wide receiver corpse I could be I could be excited about, and I know I think Mims the, the concern with him. I, I was reading like earlier that he might have had some food poisoning or something going into training camp, and he lost a lot of weight, so he's just not not there yet with what training a, camp. What a stupid excuse! That sounds what like something his excuse. agent definitely put that out. Uh, hey, I mean, sounds, you never know. You never know. That sounds like the New Jersey media making shit up again. Nah, blah blah blah. <laughs> Look, look, Mims, Mims will be okay. He'll go out in the preseason. He'll really show out, and, and everybody will love him. He'll make the team. He'll be a great – Oh, yeah, he's, he's making I mean, the he's going to make the team, yeah. He might, be fifth nah, on the depth, nah. he might be fifth on the depth chart at wide receiver. Nah. Very well could be. Yeah. I mean, look, if you're arguing about a, the number five receiver, it means that your team's probably really good. <laughs> We have, we have, I yeah. I don't, we we have, we have a couple of. That was that was a bill thing team. right there. <laughs> we have a couple of receivers on our team that look. The let me just tell you about the number five receiver. Right, they are what makes the team. Okay, so if Denzel Mims is five or if he's six, you know, six another. That's another receiver that like. It really rounds out the class when it comes to the receiver room. So if he does make the team and that's his his you know position, he's five or six on the depth chart. I mean that that could mean Super Bowl or no Super Bowl for your team. So I'm Casey I'm has very been, excited for that. Casey has <laughs> been angry. Like not even it's it's not even like angry. Like he's called me and we've been talking about it. Like <laughs> it is visibly angry over text. Wow. About the Bills wide receiver five, wide receiver six talk on Twitter. Like he is legitimately pissed off about what it makes, over. It makes or breaks the Super Bowl team. <laughs> I mean, it obviously Clearly. does. He's yeah. obviously so does. over it. Especially right, a so, team like the Buffalo Bills. So let's 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 transition over to the Bills talk then. Whatever questions you have for us, and then we'll end it with our predictions for the and the Jets season. When you do your questions, um, I want you to I want you to single us out, right? Because in your mind, you have some questions for us, right? Right. Of course. And 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 in your mind, you're like, you're like, I want you both to kind of answer this, but no, 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 we're both going to answer it. But I want you to pick who goes first, right? Because I want to see, like, put us on the spot. Like that's what I want to know. Oh, okay. and before before we do that, can you just say something nice about Josh Allen? Big he hands. said he scares them. He's got big hands, big, strong, powerful hands. Tall guy yeah. too. That's nice, right? Yeah, yeah, I that's love nice. I, yeah, I, I love a man with big, strong hands to hold me at night. Right, hey, I questions. will say, I will say, my boy from college <laughs> has got the uh, what's the Josh Allen cereal? Have you seen that? What is oh, it? the Josh Jacks. Yeah, yeah, he's got a box of those. So I mean, he's got he's got some fans over there in New York. But um, so I'll start with you, Kyle. I'll do a little question okay. here for you. Oh. And this was my Ooh. with the recent Ooh. news of uh, of Josh Allen's mega contract extension. Like, there's always talk around the National Football League, when you get a quarterback on a rookie deal and you're able to build, it's much easier to kind of build a Super Bowl contending team around him, right? You can spend money in different positional groups. Signing Josh Allen to this massive deal, of course, you had to get it done. He's an incredible talent, MVP candidate last year, you know? 
does this accelerate the timeline at all for the Buffalo Bills to to get to? I know there's got to be Super Bowl aspirations this year. Or do you feel confident enough in the stability, the culture that has been made that, I mean, a lot of the guys that you've, you've retained over the years have been drafted by the Buffalo Bills, which is a great sign. Where does that leave the timeline for the Bills? Because it, it is going to be a little bit more difficult to maybe re-sign some of your star players with Josh Allen making record, I mean, record money. I mean, good, good for him. But, um, you know, how, where does that stand on? I, I, obviously, it's going to be Super Bowl aspirations for the Bills from now on in. But where does that change kind of the five, four to five year timeline for the Buffalo Bills? So I will, I will start off by saying I am not a cap genius that I've never claimed to be. I never will claim to be. But Amen. what I do know is that the way the deal is structured, they kind of did it like Mahomes deal where it doesn't actually kick in until after his rookie deal. So I actually don't think that it accelerates the like you got to get to a Super Bowl window any more than it like it already was. I think the Bills still have this year of Josh Allen's rookie deal. They still have that fifth year of Josh Allen's rookie deal that they did pick up. And then the deal goes into effect. So okay. I don't think that it actually changes much in terms of like we got to get there now or else it's over because they kind of knew this was going to happen. They knew they're not going to be able to bring all of the guys in and they've already signed some of their like I mean, franchise guys to long-term deals. Trey white locked up Deion Dawkins locked up Poyer Hyde. Like those are, those guys are locked up long-term. So they're good. They're able to kind of mess with the cap a little bit, plan with the way the cap is going to go. The cap is going to jump up. So it's, it's going to be different the way they have to build out. They're going to have to draft well consistently. I think they have so far, as, like as far as we know, but like they're going to have to continuously do that year in and year out. And if they're able to, then there's absolutely no worries. If Josh is the quarterback long-term that we all believe he is, then there's no worries. Like We've seen Russell Wilson has gotten the Seahawks really far almost every single year, despite sometimes not having the best pieces around him. If Josh is the guy that we all think he is, then they might have a, a down year with some of the talent, but he'll be able to carry them. And maybe that's not a Super Bowl year. And maybe they're, they're like, it's, it's not going to be perfect every single year. But I fully believe that Brandon Bean is one of the best GMs in the league. So I don't really have any of those worries of like, oh, well, once he starts making 40 million a year, the bills are done. They, they can't they can't work anything out contract wise. I think they're going to be able to get things figured out partially because they already have in like in prep for that, but also because the cap's going to go up. The, the cap always goes up outside yeah. of this year. So I, I'm not as worried about that, but they're going to have to make sure like they're going to have to be on their P's and Q's hitting on their draft picks and signing those value free agents. And as long as they're able to continue doing kind of what they've done, honestly, They'll, they'll be okay. It's not really going to be a problem. So we we did have some internet difficulties there. I don't know. I, I've been having some Wi-Fi problems, apparently. I don't know. But, Zach, I just finished talking about Josh Allen and answering your question. Sorry about that, but pick it up where you were going to start. No, that, that was a great answer. I was going to say definitely for the Bills, drafting in the future will be very key. Uh, once Josh Allen is on this massive contract extension, I was unaware of the the details in that contract, so that was very good to know about there. But now, Casey, my question for you, I was uh, in the middle of it before you, Kyle, you left out, but there's that team in Kansas City with that guy, Patrick Mahomes, and I just feel like it, it might be this type of thing where you guys are going to start running into each other. And I know the AFC is loaded. There are a couple other teams out there, but I, I would really have Kansas City at the top of the AFC always. What what are the Bills going to have to do to end up beating this team, especially in the playoffs, especially if it's at Arrowhead Stadium when that environment is is bananas? Is it the type of thing where they need to secure home, home field? Is that going to be an important thing for Buffalo? Especially, I know we're getting to season predictions, but is that going to be a priority for the Buffalo Bills this year? Or is it, hey, like, we we are good, man. We're ready for the Chiefs. Whatever. Any given Sunday, we can take them. What, where do you stand on that potential? I, I, I honestly, as, as just an unbiased fan here, I potentially see this being a reoccurring matchup in the playoffs for many years to come. Yeah, and it's going to be. Um, I think as a fan to say, you know, we're ready for the Chiefs is kind of ignorant. 
right? And the, and the reason why I say that is because have we proved that we can go toe to toe with them without looking like trash? Right. I mean, I think that's, I think that's the big thing, right? We always, we've had good teams. Like last year we had a good team, right? There's no denying that we had a good team, but then we'd play the chiefs and then it's like, you know, uh, uh, Travis Kelsey goes off, right. Or, you know, the, the run game goes off, right. They, they always pick and choose their poison with us. So I think, until we can prove like that we can we can hang with them right and it's not just an embarrassment uh, of a game then I think it's it's ignorant as a fan to say that we're ready for Kansas City now to answer your question as far as like um, how do you stop them right I think everybody in the league is kind of wondering how do you stop them I think Tampa kind of uh, approved what to do right? Tampa loaded up that defensive line. They kept their bodies fresh, and they rotated oh, yeah. them in. And they kept Patrick Mahomes on his feet, uh, scrambling and 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 having to throw the ball kept away, him and on making his these butt. Quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he was, yeah. He was not yeah. on his feet. And it's like you know, you keep him on, I guess, on his on his toes should probably be the right analogy. But like you, you keep him guessing, you keep him forcing these throws, and he's not ready to do it yet. Um, I think that's the way you you do that. And what did Brandon Bean go out and do uh, in free agency and in the draft? Well, he when he picked up a bunch of defense linemen or he drafted a bunch of defense linemen. So I think Brandon Bean sees what Tampa did to beat Kansas City. And he says, yeah. you know what? I want to replicate that. And I think until our defensive line actually shows up and they show out against the Chiefs, then – as the Bills, like we can't say that we're on par with Kansas City. And I know that I'm going to get murdered for that. And I know that people are going to come at me and be like, you're not a true fan. You're not a true fan. No, it's just well, giving credit where fan, credit is. Yeah. yeah, it's analysis. Giving credit, yeah. Yeah, giving credit where credit is due. Like they, until we prove it, they are a better team than us, right? Everything in my heart, I want us to prove it. And I want us to beat them. And I want us to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. But at the end of the day, if you have Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback, it's going to be hard to get past them in the AFC. But I think it starts with our defensive line and keeping him running around, keeping him forcing throws, keeping him not doing Mahomes things. Don't give him time of the day. And then just for both of you, I just kind of piggybacking off of that question. Is is the Buffalo Bills defense, is this defense ready for the likes of Kansas City, Baltimore, Tennessee, some of these juggernauts that it, it, in the playoffs, I mean, I don't know. Again, again, it's this new age of the football. Is it going to be kind of whoever gets the ball last type of thing? Or, or are you confident enough in your defense they can make a stop when it matters? Because in the playoffs, that's, that's what you need, right? You need to stop when it matters, and then you need to go drive down the field and kick a field goal or whatever it is. I think you'd be confident enough to say you're confident in Josh Allen in that offense to get you to that point. But there's going to have to be a time against these three juggernauts, especially you're going to have to make stops. Are is that is this defense ready? I, I think it completely depends on which Bills defense we get. If we get the 2020 Bills defense, then I'm not as confident in that. Like they just didn't play as well last year. They were good. They weren't great. In past years, they've been great. I think a lot of that kind of hinges on how their defensive line, specifically the interior, plays. I mean, it was it's not like he's a big name guy, but like not having star Latule to be that run stuffing block eating guy. Like he doesn't, he doesn't take up a lot of, or he doesn't get on the statue a lot, but he does what he does in order for other guys to make the plays they need to. So getting him back, if he plays average, I think that's going to be huge for the defense, but a lot of it hinges on that. It hinges on how Milano and how Tremaine Edmonds play, because I think a lot of the other guys, like we know what we're going to get for the most part. We know the secondary is going to be really good in three of the four spots, and it's going to be average to a, maybe above average in that fourth spot with Levi Wallace, Dane Jackson. We know that Jerry Hughes is going to force pressure. We know that Ed Oliver is going to be good uh, on as a pass rusher. We like, we know a lot of things about this defense, but can the center of the field, can they hold that down? And then kind of adding on top of it, 
can the other defensive ends outside of Jerry Hughes get pressure? If they can, then yeah, I, I'm, I have no doubts that the bills are going to be able to get those stops, but they're yeah. going to have to be able to put it together a lot better than they did for most of the season last year. If they play the way they played against Baltimore. Yeah. No doubt in my mind, no doubt in my mind that they will be able to get whatever stops they need to. But if they play the way they played in the playoffs against Indy, it's, it's I mean that like, that's a tale of two defenses right there. So yeah. I'm hoping we get the the defense that showed up against Baltimore. I would say no, right? I would say right now, and the only reason why I say that is because 2019 was like two years ago, right? Right. Yeah. So if if we're going if we're going off the latest product that we've seen on the field, which was the 2020 defense, like no, I I don't like I'm biting my nails. Like please, I'm I'm trying right. to sell my firstborn you know, daughter uh, to the football gods because like I, we, we need to stop. Like that's, that's how I felt about the 2020 defense. Eh, they weren't the worst defense in the league. They were middle of the pack. Right. But it's been so long for us to get a franchise quarterback and, and for the bills to actually like have a good offense. And it's always been the defense carrying us. Right. And then to turn around and be like, dang, guys, can y'all just get off the field on third down <laughs> once in your life? Like, that yeah. kind of sucks. But mm-hmm. I, I think Brandon Bean has put together such a good defensive line this offseason. Like, you know, we're doing 53-man projections on, on Twitter, right? And and we're getting killed for having so many defensive line. And it's like, well, who else are you going to cut, right? Yeah. Like, you want this rotation. Like, there's a reason why – uh, you know, he went out and he signed a lot of people in free agency for the defensive line, or he, you know, drafted for with his first two picks, the defensive line. Like he wants a lot of people for that defensive line. So you hope that the line is good. And if the line is good, then that kind of solidifies your linebackers. And that definitely solidifies your back end, right? I've always been the type of guy to say, I want to build from the front to the back when it comes to the defense. I want my line to be really good. And then I want to start looking at my secondary. Um, the bills kind of did it the opposite way. They, you know, they start with the secondary and they're moving forward and you kind of see in how long that kind of, you know, takes to get there. You can't cover somebody forever. If your front end isn't getting to the quarterback. So ask me again, like in the middle of the season, after the first four games, go ahead and yeah. shoot me a text and ask me that same question. Cause I want to see what these young guys are these guys that we got in free agency, what can they do on the field? So, yeah. And the front office, like you're saying, it seems aware of it. So they're addressing it, which is always yeah. a good sign. So yeah, it's, you got to see them on the field, but okay. Yeah. yeah. Good answers guys. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate uh, uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm, let's, I'm, let's do predictions. Cause we, I mean, we are running. So we're, we're so bad at doing <laughs> short shows. Like we can't, we can't do a so short show to save bad. our life. Um, so, my prediction for the Jets, because obviously we'll, we'll do our own Bills predictions later on, but um, my prediction for the Jets, I think they're probably a six-win team, and that's I mean that's a good spot to be in with a rookie quarterback. If they can get to six wins, four or five, I, four would be disappointing. If I think if you're a Jets yes. fan, you get yeah. five or six wins. That's I mean that shows some sort of potential, some sort of promise. But I think it, you, what you care more about than wins as a Jets fan this year is just seeing, like, does, does Zach Wilson look like he might have it? Like, yeah. whatever that it is, does he have it? So I, I think it might be a little bit of a struggle, might be a frustrating season at, at times. But I think the Jets are headed in the right direction. I think the Bills are still going to be able to handle them at, at the very least in the first game of the season that they play. They play the last game of the season, too. So that's... That's Spoilers. kind of up in the air. That might be, I mean, that, that might be, be an important a, a game. loss for the the Bills at that point because they might or, have things locked up, or, or it could yeah. be an important game. I think if it's an important game, the Bills handle the Jets both games. But yeah. who knows how things could go? I, I just don't think the Jets are there yet, where they're like a real true contender. But like I keep saying, they're building something. Should I go with mine? No. Yeah. Yeah. Go um, ahead. Yeah. Okay. I I was going to say something similar. I was going to say six or seven wins is probably like my ideal prediction optimistically because I'm always an optimistic Mm. person. (laughs) I would like to say hopefully maybe they could sneak around the eight or nine mark. The schedule isn't too terrible when you're looking at it, 
Um, I tell you what, the first four games are going to tell a lot about this team. No better way to start the year than against Carolina Panthers, Zach Wilson versus Sam Darnold. Man, if he comes out and and just lights it up and and proves everybody, hey, you made the right choice drafting me, that confidence that the offense could just keep going could carry some momentum into the season. I don't know. You know, there's there's a lot of factors. The defense, like we talked about, is going to be a struggle against some of these better teams in the AFC. Um, realistically, I'll go seven. I will go seven, and what is it? They play 17 this year, right? So seven and, and, uh, and 10? Be seven, Man, yeah, seven and 10. It's, it's going to take Jeez. a little bit of – it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to the 17 games, but by the time we're used to it, it's going to be 18. Yeah, yeah, right. But uh, like, like you said, I just want to see consistency. I want to see the makings of of a, another electric, a dynamic offense that has those breakout plays, has those hopefully big plays to Elijah Moore, big, nice, spectacular catches from Corey Davis, big runs from Michael Carter. You never know. I really expect the defense to keep us in some games. It, it, it'll be important for the offense to get a run game established for that defense again. You know, to keep them on, give them some rest in between. Um, but we'll see. You know, we'll see. I expect them. Uh, the Jets are always competitive with, with the Bills, so we'll see. We'll see. Those right, games Jared. are always close, you know. Casey Rowland. You guys will um, definitely handle us. But. I I said earlier five to six wins, and I, I think that's an absolute win for the Jets if they get to five or six. Now, of course, are we going to make fun of them for being five yes. and six, you know, five to six wins? Absolutely. Absolutely we're going to make fun of them. But in in our hearts, we're going to know, shit, Right. Because you you want this rookie quarterback to come out there and you want it to be zero and eight on the season, you know, and you want New York media to be just absolutely demolishing him. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think they're going to come out. They're going to win five to six games. Um, and the year after that, they're going to get a little bit better. And I think honestly, and we're going to, we're going to move on to the Dolphins eventually in this, this crossover series. But I think that it's going to get to the point where it's actually the Dolphins who are the bottom feeders in the AFC East and you're looking at, you know, Buffalo, New York, um, Patriots, and then the Dolphins. So um, that's a lot, lot to say for, for the Jets. So. Hey, if, if that guy is still running the show in new England, man, never count him out. That's all I'll say. And I bitterly hate the Patriots, but you can never count them out. Once that guy retires, I'll be like, whew. Finally, done with the Patriots. Until then, man, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. He's as, long as, as long as Cam is their starting quarterback, I am yeah, just going to officially. Worried. For how long do you think that'll be? Uh, whatever. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, the, right. the Zach, fourth game. This, yeah, the fourth. <laughs> however long exactly. his shoulder holds exactly. up. Exactly. Then it's uh, Mac Jones time. <laughs> yeah. All right, Zach, we, we appreciate you taking all this time out of your night. Um, let's Let's just close this out. Let me get a go, Bills. Okay. Go Bills. For you guys. For you guys having me on, taking the time to invite a a divisional rival gay on. I mean, come on. New York team. I I really thought. New York team. I'll pull for the other New York team. Hey, if it's in in the playoffs there, if it's in the playoffs and it's you guys, Kansas City, Baltimore, Tennessee, I'll be pulling for Buffalo. The, the hatred isn't there as much as I know it's on Kyle's and to me as he's he's, <laughs> he's portrayed to me over the years. But, uh, you know, I'll always be rooting for uh, for those uh, New York teams, man. Thanks for having me on, guys. It was, it was a pleasure. Yes, Casey, finish this out. Go Bills. Bye. Every time, go Bills. 